standing. All right. You have it. But don't turn your back to me. Bless you, Nathan. I won't let you die with your blood on my hands. There's no remedy, cousin. Search your soul. Such contemptible treachery is no part of your nature. You were corrupted, cousin. Seduced. Now, if Lord Howe were to know this, we could... Seduced? By whom? By agitators, who stuffed your foolish head with seditious nonsense, then turned you over to a rebel leader to be used as his cat's paw. I am no man's cat's paw. I volunteered. Oh, oh, yes. Because no other in that army of malcontents and misfits would, I suspect. Your general sent you here to die. Is he prepared to help you now? Answer me. You know that's beyond his power. You defend him. Defend yourself. Don't you want to live? Think on what I've said, Nathan. I'll return as soon as I can. Samuel. Whatever happens, I bear you no grudge. Didn't you tell them? I told them. Why aren't they here, then? Do you think they want to hang, too? Every man is needed. We have a plan. To what? To snatch him from the gallows in front of a company of redcoats? You're mad. What about Battery Park? There'll be no company of redcoats there. I know nothing of your plans for Battery Park. You better start learning them. In 24 hours, they embark the dragoons. They mean to sail them up the Hudson and attack our army in the rear at Harlem Heights. Don't tell me. Tell General Washington. It's too late. There's no guarantee we'd get through. It's not too late to stop them. We can't stop dragoons. No, but we can steal their horses. You think you can run a hundred horses through the whole British army? As many as we can. The rest will run so ragged they'll be useless for days. You tell each son of liberty that we rendezvous just before dawn in the alley behind Stuyvesant Street and tell each man to bring a bridle. We move at dawn tomorrow. They won't do it. The three of us can't do it alone. Well, we can't help it. The fight's gone out of us. Don't you understand? That after Nathan's arrest, it's opened our eyes. This rebellion against our king is hopeless. Our king? Yes, our king. I mean, is he really so bad? What about your country? I guess we realize now that, that a ragged army and a few proclamations don't make a country. <laughs> but you leave me alone, or I swear I'll turn you into the provost marshal myself. Let him go, Henry. Things are not going as they should, Jeremy. But don't be too hard on them, Henry. They're young and they're afraid. So is Nathan. We have a mission. If they don't join us, we do it without them. May I speak further of this, sir? Please do. I had no idea the lad was a soldier. A captain, sir. In Knowlton's Rangers. One of Washington's best units. Can you imagine, sir, what it would do to their morale if one of their officers were to renounce their cause? It's time, lad.
Just a moment, Lieutenant. I'd like to speak with the prisoner. Have you thought about what I asked you to, Nathan? Yes. Thought deeply? Samuel, a man in my position isn't frivolous. Good. Of course, we must appear to go through with the hanging, but Lord Howe will commute your sentence. Exactly what does his lordship expect in exchange? Nothing. Nothing? Uh, just words, Nathan. A few words. No betrayal of comrades. No military information. Two words. What kind of words? Of repentance, of regret, that you're about to waste your life for a cause that's betrayed you. Captain, time is short. Nathan, do you understand? Yes. All right, Lieutenant. We're finished. sovereign has a kind and loving heart. That is why he has given me the power to grant amnesty to all those who lay down their arms and end this foolish conflict. His majesty could even find mercy in his heart for the likes of this lad here, who has been taken as a spy. I suspect that this young man now realizes that he has risked his life for a cause that exists only in the minds of fools or criminals. My boy, before we execute sentence, have you anything you wish to say? Yes, my lord. I am well satisfied with the cause in which I have engaged. I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country.
Looks like we're going to have to do this alone. Sorry. It was a little tough getting away. Anybody suspicious? No. It'll be a while before I'm missed. I just hope General Howell never comes to Chester to have his horse shot. From British officer's orderly to blacksmith. You've come up in the world, Isaac. Everything is still the same. The schedule hasn't changed. It'll be light soon. Let's go. We have to try. was coming, nor I. Why did you? I said it wasn't a country. I was wrong. He died for it. And he didn't die for nothing. I only hope I can lead you as well. Let's go. I should think so. Rebels! Such audacity! What inspires these men, Captain? Gentlemen, the General intends to retreat across the Hudson tonight. Thanks to you, my friends, the dragoons won't be on our flanks. And the general has time to fortify his defenses. He asked me to convey his gratitude. Most of the credit belongs to Nathan, sir. Nathan? The man you sent us to find. Where is he? He's dead. The British hanged him. Did he die well? No man ever died better. At least his death wasn't futile, Colonel. There were those who had surrendered and given up hope. But now, because of him, they're fighting again. I imagine he'll be forgotten. Too bad. He gave so much. He was a non-violent man in a violent world. He said he regretted he had only one life to give for his country. I don't think he'll be forgotten. Formerly a school teacher, Nathan Hale was a captain in Knowlton's Rangers. He was working behind British lines, gathering information for General Washington. Some historians believe that his cousin Samuel, employed by the British, caused his capture. He was hanged as a spy in New York City on September 22, 1776. He was 21 years old. 